We just finished a long day of hair restoration and so I'm a bit tired, but I want to go over with you guys exactly what it takes to get a great result. We're using this styrofoam model to show you the different angles of hair that are required to get a great result. It's not just about putting little sights in and, and putting hair in. That is the sort of generic general terminology of putting uh, and doing hair restoration. I want to show you some of the details. So this styrofoam head really helps us see that. If you take a look, for starting out with the hairline, going backward, you can see that the angles are very low in the front, and they begin to go slowly upward toward about 34, 35 degrees upwards in this central mid-scalp. It creates more lift in this area, and therefore more density as we go back up, but it also mimics the natural angulation of hair. But as the hair goes forward, it's very important for that angle to be low in the front for two reasons. One, it's much more natural. And the second reason is that it actually draws the hairline a little bit downward so that it actually draws the visual density downward of the hairline. If you look here, what we try to do is create almost everything in the mid-scalp area to be forward so that you don't have things splayed open like a book and it creates more visual density in the center. Toward the side, the area that is at the outer port part of the eye going out called the lateral hump. This area, if you look at it, it's a unique area and that needs to be created differently. The way that we do this is that there's a gradual falling down, a cascading effect of that hair going downward. And that lateral hump has to be created uniquely compared to the other areas of the scalp. The area that is in the front part of the lateral hump which is the temporal angle where the temple begins to fall downward. If you look at the hair, it begins gradually to slope downward in this direction and very, very low angles, almost flat to the scalp. In order to create a very natural look in this temple area, you have to recreate that angulation and the natural transition from the lateral hump down toward the temple. The transition from the lateral hump going to the mid-scalp in this area also has to have a slight falling away. So as I start from the very lateral one to two centimeters of the central hairline, I begin to just gently slope those grafts downward. And that light transition is really what makes a natural result because what you're trying to do is have all the different areas just gradually transition. Finally, we're going to talk about these crown and what I call the vertex transition point or the area where the crown becomes the central mid-scalp. We're going to go through more of this in a different video as well to reinforce some of the concepts. If you look at the crown, this is just sort of a gross idea, but all the angles are in a swirl pattern. And I recreate that all the time when I do a crown. As you see, as it goes up toward the mid-scalp, there's actually a gentle splaying forward, and there's this gentle opening as it transitions into the lateral hump on the side and into the back of the mid-scalp here. So all of these little transitions have to be really perfectly recreated to get a great result. We're going to go and finish up this video by going over some of the same angles once again with a little bit closer up view so that you can more appreciate some of the changes. If you look here, the angle in the front hairline is very, very low. And as I was mentioning before, there's a gradual going upward to about 35 degrees or so in the central mid-scalp. You can see here that lateral hump, which is this area right here, gradually cascading downward and transitioning into this very low angled temple. And then as you see back here, the crown, it's a nice swirl pattern that is recreated. And as you can see, as it goes forward anteriorly, there's a gradual spreading across this way, across what I call the upper crescent or the vertex transition point, where the crown becomes the mid-scalp. And that little transition, if you see all these areas, there are gradual and soft transitions between one zone to the other. That level of care is what you see in an exceptional hair restoration procedure.